but what's up? Let's do a little jamming. On the Ibanez RG6003, you tune down one whole step. Sounds nice. Thank <laughs> you. 
practicing there <laughs> to get these three notes. But kind of do it with your ring finger and your pinky. I'm really out of sync here myself. That hurts too man. God, I can't do my pinky like that. I don't know how John Petrucci and all these guys can do that stuff and do those chromatic runs where they can stay at one. My fingers want to eat the strings up, like my, my tips keep on to rise upward and over the top of the string. Gotta break that stuff. Jeez. Turn the delay off real quick. Go to number one. <laughs> I kind of learned a little piece of a, a Pantera riff. I, if I can remember how to play it. <laughs> Five minutes alone. Pretty cool. <laughs> See where they go. See what happens. And some of it sounds awesome, some of it sounds like shit. But you gotta experiment a little bit.
I do stuff like that to kind of throw myself off and see if I can get my fingers to, to conform to that kind of movement. Stuff you know doesn't work. What you know doesn't work. Well, I mean, if you can get it to conform like that, you'll be ready for anything that you see in a piece of music that requires odd fingering. Like, uh... And you know it don't make sense, but do it anyway. guitar and learning when I was younger is you know learning Metallica and doing all down picking all the time my alternate picking down up down up has really suffered because I never used it on the sections that required it like I can even still do it I forget how that part goes like that kind of you know I mean the bell tolls lead part. Kirk does use strict alternate picking on that, but I always down picked it. And when I was playing lead and going from string to string, it was always but now I'm conforming to do this and I can't break it, but I would used to go where you know you're doing like that all the time. And now I kind of conform myself. And, kind of go. and it makes it easier. But if you were to go down, up, down, down. Down, up, down, down, up. Go through that. Do that right there. Tommy picking. I'm not great at it, but it really does help. If you're uh, playing a fast passage with a lot of notes, it sometimes is the most efficient way to play all the notes and get it to sound good. Let's keep working on that, man. practicing a little bit and I don't know if I can do this right but we're gonna try <laughs>
Get the rest of it, but uh, that's Rite of Passage by Dream Theater. And then they have that. Uh... <laughs> Something like that. That riff's hard. Then it goes into the solo that I don't even know where to start to do that. I'm going to practice sing that a little bit. And this. And I think this might be where we end it. Okay. At wit's end, that really melodic solo that Petrucci plays on that song. If, if no one's heard that, that watches my channel, At Wit's End by Dream Theater, go check that out and just listen to the song. It's got some crazy good musical elements. Vocals are great. Everything about that song's great. Check it out. But this is the melodic solo. Some of what I've gotten. What time were you on it at? 18? Some of what I've gotten down from this book. And from what I can tell, from what Petrucci's playing live on my Blu ray, this is pretty accurate. There might be a few notes that are off, but we'll see. keep working on it and it'll be perfected someday maybe I know he has this kind of that kind of thing in there and I learned that from him it's a pedal tone thing you're gonna have a note that constantly repeats throughout your throughout your passage so here's your pedal tone This note here, or whatever note you choose, is going to be your pedal tone, the one that repeats throughout the phrase. So if you do it the 12th fret, third string. how to connect arpeggios a little bit and I'm starting small because I suck I suck at sweeping but I kind of figured out kind of it's sloppy as shit of course but who cares right so let's go back to cleaning one last time to kind of end the video
We're gonna do a little Satriani style tapping. Just because. <laughs> out of the way man do it with my pinky I love this technique it's so cool He's just too weak to do that. I wish I could learn how to do that and get it strong enough to really hit it and make it work. But anyway. This right here is E. E major. Find your octave. Then where's your next E? Down there. And then. That's also E. And then. There we go. how to do that once again I've done this lesson before but the hardest part of it is getting your hands in time with each other so that when this note hits you're coming down with this finger on the 12th fret D string and you're gonna add in A string ninth fret B string 12th fret with this finger. And do it slowly like that, really slowly, and then get it in time. It's all movable, you can do it anywhere you want. Even up here. Maybe easier for you up on the higher fret. And like I said, the reason I recommend the ring finger for the hammers on these chords, because your pinky's not quite strong enough unless you really work at it. And it's gonna take you longer to get it under your hands using this, using the pinky. And once you start to explore this technique, and you do more complex tapping stuff, then you'll have to, to sit down and work on that strength in your pinky finger. So anyway, just wanted to jam a little bit, have a little fun, and I hope you guys enjoyed. I really had a lot of fun doing this, and I haven't made a guitar video in quite a bit, so I figured I'd do it. And I hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching, and keep it metal out there. Grab your instruments and start practicing. <laughs>